But uh, I thank you for the opportunity to talk to you and the council tonight just to kind of give an update in terms of where we are in the city of Schenectady. I wanted to talk uh, a little bit quickly about the history, what we do, what it costs, and where we should focus our resources and efforts. That Schenectady is 215 years old, 2013. It's got a long, distinguished history. We've seen, uh, we've lived through a civil war, two world wars, a Great Depression. This community has always risen to the challenge. It's solved problems, and it's created a proud heritage. And I could sit here tonight and talk about uh, all the things that are significant in this community, and it would take all night. But I think that we just have to continually remember that proud history and heritage. But I'd like to talk about the things that we do as a community. And if you look at our police department, that the number of calls for service last year were over 81,000 calls. It's uh, 220 calls a day. It's over nine an hour. Now, the significant thing in that number is that we saw a decrease of a little over 5%. And I attribute that really to some of the leadership from uh, former chief chairs, Commissioner Bennett and uh, Chief Kilcullen, where we're starting to use ComStat, the DDAX approach, where we're taking the uh, police and deploying them in a manner that is most cost effective and it is driven by statistical data. In that, we saw that uh, auto accidents, as we're doing that DDAX, which is part of it's the traffic component, were down 13%. And our part one crimes were down over 8% or just under 9%, while that statewide trend was up. And so the one year in and by itself doesn't set a trend, but we're going in the right direction. And again, I would compliment uh, Commissioner Bennett, uh, Chief Kilcullen, the command staff, and the men and women that make up the uh, police department. That we deployed 27 uh, new cameras in the neighborhood. We have a total now of 122 that are out there. But if you look at just the numbers, that is a very busy department. There are calls that come in all the time. Some of them are simple, some of them are routine. A lot of them are very complex that require the deployment of more than one car and a lot of resources from this community. If you look at our fire department, there were uh, 15,000 calls for service in 2012. That number was up about 4%. And again, I think as we start to do some of the things that we have done in the police department, and we start to apply these in a more coordinated and comprehensive manner across the city, we'll see some improvement with our fire department, and also our code operation. But we have an extremely busy fire department. Of those uh, 15,200 calls, over 64% of them were EMS calls. Of those, the 2,300 were for advanced life support. People who live in this community are truly fortunate to have a quality delivery of medical, emergency medical service that our fire department provides. We're always busy, we're always on the go there, and uh, again, it is a department that uh, we're proud of, that does a great job, you look at just the, the number of fires that we had in the city, it's 537. So there's a uh, fire, a fire and a half every day. Fortunately, the real serious fires are few in number, and that's because of the swift response that we have from our fire department. Our code enforcement operation. We're seeing some results. We, uh, a full year ago, had brought in uh, Tom Wilson from uh, TWA, did a uh, review of the department, looked how to restructure it, how to uh, make it more effective. And we're starting to see results from that. Uh, if you look at our actual results, just in terms of uh, 
just under 2,500 building and electrical permits. The revenue we're generating from that, you can see there's uh, just across the board with uh, just one exception, everything is up what I would call significantly. And that's because of the work that is being done every day. Uh, Eric Schilling and the team in place there is doing a great job. We want to continue to build on that as we look to automate it and again integrate the analysis that is done in terms of the problems with police, fire, and codes so that we are responding in a uh, comprehensive and results-oriented manner in the city. Our general services and engineering, last year we did uh, about nine and a half miles of uh, city streets, resurfaced them, rebuilt them, finally got the Erie Boulevard project underway. That'll be completed this fall. That will open up development opportunities along Erie Boulevard and again from State Street going down to the community college. Uh, we re rehabilitated the surface of the Central Park pool. Uh, the engineering department put together a grant application in conjunction with the school district and we were awarded $379,000 for Safe Routes to School program and that will provide sidewalks from uh, the rear of uh, the high school going up to uh, Zoller along McClellan. There's work done in the body shop, again working in conjunction with the uh, county, We've, uh, refurbished equipment. Uh, the last item there, we uh, did the uh, culvert replacement project on uh, Edison Avenue. That was a result of the damage that occurred during Irene. And uh, it was a $803,000 project that was funded through FEMA. Our law department is uh, always working. I left out all the work they do in terms of preparing resolutions and stuff for the city council, but I know that everybody's been counting each one of those every night, so you've got that total right on the top of your, uh, or on the tip of your tongue, to be able to re repeat it if we have a question and answer period at the end. Is that, is that a yes or no? Or? <laughs> but uh, performed uh, 160 tax foreclosures, 112 tax certiorarys, uh, collection for property damage that occurred on city property, collected $26,000 there. There were 1,100 uh, prosecutions for code violations. There was a, over $100,000 in revenue. Responded to an excess of 1,000 Freedom of Information requests and 223 subpoenas. We currently have 85 open and outstanding claims and there's 48 pending lawsuits that we, uh, again, appreciate the council's efforts in working on those and resolving them in a uh, manner that is in the best interest of the city. Our utilities department, Mr. Coluccio, he helps with PowerPoints when he's not out uh, solving the uh, traffic and lighting problems of the city. But, again, all these things, it shows the activity of the city. We do a lot of things every day that generally the employees and staff don't get recognition for unless something goes wrong. And then we all want to know why. We want to uh, uh, look for problems and who's at fault. I tell everybody, of course, that when things go right, somebody else takes credit for it. When it goes wrong, it's my fault. And fortunately, we have a few, just a few times where things go wrong. But there were uh, just uh, work orders, 728, they were for uh, largely replacement of signs, performed 156 work orders for posting of temporary parking restrictions, 195 calls for traffic signal fire alarms and dispatch issues. Uh, and again, we encourage people to always report when a street light is out. Uh, there's a number they can call directly to National Grid, but we will route them through the department. And again, uh, last year there were just under 300 uh, street outages, street light outages that were reported. And uh, we try and keep the uh, traffic lanes properly delineated. And so uh, this year we use 600 gallons of uh, paint to uh, keep our lines and uh, markings in the street. We replaced 80 sets of uh, street name signs, 
Uh, some of that's driven by budgetary considerations that we'd probably like to do more because it does reflect on the image of the city and keeping our streets properly marked. Our development department, <coughs> again, our uh, homes program, which I'll talk about in a little bit, uh, our key to the city. We just uh, announced the closing of our 100th house there, and while the, uh, we're fortunate to have had Key Bank as a partner in that program, which provided a uh, fairly aggressive mortgage package to applicants in the city of Schenectady, and we, again, uh, a little over a year, we've done 100 houses there. There were approximately another 100 houses where even though people looked at the Key Bank financing option, they chose to go with another bank or another institution. And while we've given credit to Key and done that, the, we have full partners with NBT, We're looking to work with uh, Bank of America, Trusco has some products here, uh, and we're always looking to expand that to bring it in again to make home ownership possible here in the city of Schenectady. Our consolidated plan received a uh, little under $2 million in community development block grant money, it was $300,000 in home money, and 200000 in ESG money from HUD, uh, the consolidated plan, we monitored uh, 21 sub-recipient organizations with 58 different projects. Again, 97% of that CDBG money goes to benefit low and moderate and income individuals. There were 22 housing units that we rehab for homeowners. We had five new homeowners through our HDFC assistance. Uh, 427 homeless individuals were sheltered and received support services. Our total outreach reached about 9,600 low and moderate individuals were assisted through our funding here. Fortunate that last year the uh, state legislature passed the tax increment financing law, which I believe will be a key component as we get our land bank up and running in 2013. Again, as we look to create home ownership opportunities here in the community. We also, uh, the staff completed the Liberty Park study. Hopefully we'll be able to start construction on that soon. Our water department. I have a little bit of water there. To we produced a uh, little over 5 billion gallons of water. It's uh, 13, 3 quarters million gallons a day is the average. Uh, part of our ongoing efforts, we uh, redeveloped uh, one of the uh, wells at the uh, field in Rotterdam. Uh, Paul LaFond runs a great operation there. A uh, number of fairly large valves were replaced. There were 10 emergency water main repairs by city crews last year. We repaired approximately 50 damaged fire hydrants and part of the uh, ongoing uh, maintenance replaced 25 old fire hydrants. Uh, installed 30 new water valves and uh, replaced uh, 2,100 feet of uh, water lines in the city. Part of the maintenance operation, and that again is done in conjunction, coordination with our street rehabilitation program so that we try and, when we're on a site, do everything at once. Our sewer department uh, maintains 320 miles of sanitary and storm sewers. Last year we had uh, over 3,000 calls for the inspection of sanitary lines and removing blockages and other specific related problems. We responded to 2,700 requests for locations through the Underground Facilities Protective Organization where people are doing construction, other work, we will come in and mark our uh, pipes that are underground so that when people are digging they don't hit it or damage it. And uh, our, uh, the 538 truck, as it's referred to, responded to over a thousand calls for assistance. That is a crew that will go out and put up road barriers, uh, other emergency things at after hours. It shows that there are things always going on in the city and when it happens, we have the uh, people and resources that are able to deal with it. We inspected uh, 48,000 feet of sanitary uh, and storm sewer systems. 
That's part of the ongoing maintenance. Again, we camera that. We do that in-house so that we can determine where there are problems, defects, and try and stay ahead of uh, major problems. Our wastewater treatment plant, which was the uh, first year that we brought it back under uh, city operation, uh, pleased to report to you that when we finally close out the books, relatively confident that our overall savings will exceed a million dollars in 2012. And again, our uh, co-generation facility there where we're uh, burning the gas that <clears throat> is created at the plant and generating electricity, that saved uh, about $280,000 in electrical cost. It's a uh, big facility. It is a regional resource and asset because it serves not only the city of Schenectady, but Glenville, parts of southern Saratoga County, and some in Rotterdam and parts of Niskayuna. It's uh, 4 billion gallons. Uh, it's 13.2 million gallons of wastewater a day. Uh, all that was done where we met all the regulatory requirements and we had no permit violations in 2012. Again, Paul Lafon and his team there do a great job. Our uh, finance department, I'm, uh, again, pleased to report to you and relatively confident that we will close out the books. I can't quote you a number because they're still doing uh, some of the accounting, but we will have a modest fund surplus in our general operating account for 2012. But again, the finance department is always active. You know, you think of the budget preparation, some of the more high profile things that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. But the routine things that are done there, payroll checks, uh, uh, processing of purchase orders, other things, uh, the uh, number there we collected 51% of the property tax liens in 2011. It's a number we want to continue to work on, look to improve. Sometimes we've uh, talked on an ongoing basis about you know, going to a bi-weekly payroll, and there's uh, contractual uh, issues with that, getting everybody on board with it to actually make it work. Uh, we're moving in a direction where we're going to, I think, have the same results by being able to email individuals their stub for their paycheck, individuals who sign up for direct deposits. This was the first year that we emailed W-2s to employees. We've got uh, 600 employees, 67 people signed up for it. So I would encourage members of the council who haven't taken advantage of that to consider it. And we also start to try and market that to the rest of the workforce because that saves us from printing the actual paychecks and other related uh, tax documents. Look at our 2013 uh, budget. You know, where does the money come from? Uh, $31 million, about 40% is from our uh, real property tax. Other revenue, which includes our state aid, which uh, we're a little bit on the low end of that formula, gives us $30 million. Uh, our sales tax revenue this year will give us a uh, little over $11,700,000. Uh, some out of our operating reserves, some of our new initiatives with housing and other things will be about a million and a half dollars. And that's where the money comes, and then you take a quick look at actually where we spend it. Our police and fire department cost us 46 million, 46.8 million dollars. If you look at that again, that is more than we raise in property tax to fund those departments. And these numbers include fringe benefits. But it outlines where we spend the money and the importance of it. And it's in those initial slides where we looked at some of our reduction of calls for service in the uh, police department and some of those things that we're doing in the fire department. I can't overemphasize the importance of looking at these things statistically and how do we better manage those resources when we're deploying police, fire, and our code operation to make sure that when we're going to a problem property, a problem place, or a problem individual, we solve the problem the first time. 
And a lot of times, it, it's not solely the police department's responsibility, it's not the fire department, it's not codes, but it's when you work comprehensively, and it also requires us working with other levels of government, our county, the school district, and other ones, to deal with those issues and problems. But it's a lot of money we spend. We want to make sure that people understand where we're spending the money and that they feel that they're getting good results for the dollars that we spend on their behalf. Some quick demographics. Uh, this is out of the 2010 uh, census. And while we're looking at all our housing issues, uh, some of the numbers we compile internally and look to work with the council in terms of uh, identifying some specific goals. We talked about things in the police department where we wanted improvements, uh, measurable uh, items. And I think we should look at that across the board, not only in police, but in fire, in all the other services that we deliver. You compare us to our neighboring uh, towns, and the one thing that stands out, again, is our level of vacancies in property. We run, you know, 7% higher. It's that underutilization of the property that is one of the things that we have to address as a community, and if we're looking to create long-term value, that's one of the things we have to uh, eliminate. Again, this is from the 2010 census. These numbers have shifted a little bit since then, but I believe it's a fair comparison. A lot of the housing stock is the same in all the uh, political subdivisions and communities, but the value of Schenectady property is at the low end of the scale. And it's been part of our marketing through the Homes Program where we talk about individuals buying a house in Schenectady get far more for their dollar than they do in other communities. And at the same time, we have the greatest potential to see that number rise. If we do some of the things where we improve the delivery of service, we continue to contain the uh, taxes that are imposed on the residents and create value here that the property values will rise here in this community. Our biggest liability, our biggest asset, it's our real estate. We're in the real estate business now as we do the foreclosures. And it's challenging. We all know the problems with derelict property uh, where you have absentee landlords, things are run down, things haven't been addressed. It creates a negative influence on the community. There's a lot of potential in there if we can turn that around, and that's why I believe it is our biggest asset. It's why I look forward to working with the council, with the staff, and other community leaders while we put this together to make a uh, difference in the community. Again, uh, we've marketed that on the, uh, under the label of homes. <clears throat> Home ownership made easy in Schenectady. That doesn't happen overnight. And this is the umbrella label that uh, have been using, want to continue to use. And we have to look at all the things that are the components of home ownership. How do we improve on those? How do we do them in a more cost-effective manner? How do we just make it easy for people to live here? How do we make this community more attractive than other communities? You know, we've done the uh, financing with uh, Key Bank, where they had an aggressive mortgage packet. We have other banks that are coming up. We have to look internally in terms of our uh, permitting process, our planning processes. How do we do those things that make it easy for people and create a friendly atmosphere here for, to buying a home, to maintaining a home, and just, again, adding value in this community? It doesn't happen alone. It's, again, it's a community. So some of the responsibility is clearly mine. Some of it falls on you as members of the city council. But I believe that it's a broad-based effort from our neighborhood organizations, businesses, working with Metroplex, Schenectady County, our industrial development agency, our new land bank, 
the school district, which has been a, a key component in our partnership here, marketing the community. Larry Spring, the new superintendent, is really a great individual, and uh, we have many of the same problems that overlap, and how do we work together to make those things happen? It's a multi-year effort. We have to have just steady incremental improvements. And really our best game plan is just to do it house by house. We've seen the downtown turnaround, uh, but it was by building by building. We're doing that now where we talk about the 100 houses that were sold through Key to the City, uh, another 100 houses through other financing mechanisms. We now have 150 properties that we own. We'll take another 100 and some in the next round of foreclosures. We have to go out and market those and bring people in to deal with the properties. And a lot of them, again, are distressed properties, so they're not easy deals. They're complicated. We have to... Uh, work through them, we have to uh, find innovative ways, we have to have people of vision. It's what I call, we're looking for urban pioneers, people who want to move into Schenectady, want to be part of the turnaround of this community, want to again take their place in history while we do innovative and exciting things. We're going to get real long-term results. It won't happen overnight. You know, we talk about downtown. Uh, that's been a full eight-year undertaking, and there's still a lot more to do in downtown. There's a lot to do in our neighborhoods. And I look forward to uh, working with the uh, members of the council to uh, make that happen, to uh, build a uh, track record that if we go back to the first slide, will uh, mark us down as a place in history that when they look back at this period in time, they said, you know, wow, those people did what was right. They made a difference, they worked together, and they made things happen. And so I thank you for this opportunity to talk to you uh, tonight. Look forward to working with you, and uh, do appreciate your consideration, the time and effort that you put in on behalf of the city.